Hello everyone and this is point blending in Houdini or particle blending. Uh, the idea behind this tutorial was to try and do an effect or try and make an effect in Houdini uh, using just the ready-made nodes that you get like without uh, typing anything in a wrangle node. So the idea is to try and make it as vex free as possible. Uh, not for any other reason but just to see like you know Houdini gives you thousands of nodes so it's possible that you can you know, just use those and make something instead of just always writing something in uh, in a wrangle sop. So anyway, so this is the result you know of that, which is essentially just a bunch of points you know blending between two shapes. The number of points are the same, so uh, this is not like you know independent of point numbers, but uh, yeah, this is using as little vex as possible. Okay. Uh, Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, I'll just create a piece of geometry and uh, let's create, you know, the test geometry big head and we also want to create the test geometry rubber toy. Okay, you can take anything that you want. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'll try and match their sizes. Again, not important, but and then I'll just move it down here. Okay, so this is this is fine. Uh, let's also rotate it in the other direction. So I'm gonna rotate it, you know, 180. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scatter some points on this. And the scattered points have to be the same. Okay, so I'm scattering, let's say we'll scatter about 2000 points on this. And then I also want to scatter, you know, the same number of points here. The only, uh, what we'll do is we'll just copy the total count from this one and paste it here. So do paste relative reference. So they have the same number of points. Now, uh, the other thing I also want to do is because I'm blending it in the Z axis, let's also take a sort and we'll, you know, number them in the Z axis. So we'll just do by Z in both of them. Uh, let's make this slightly bigger as well. Okay. Okay, so this is good. Now, uh, we want to do a couple of things. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to use something called as the attribute adjust float and vector nodes. Okay, those are those are really powerful. Like you can do a ton of things with them. Uh, so what we're going to do is just to show you. Okay, I'll take the, I'll just type in vector. So I should get attribute adjust vector. So let's say if we take this and you can apply it to you know, a bunch of things you can apply to points, vertex, primitive, we just want to apply it to points. The default is kept to velocity, we don't want velocity, so we'll keep it to position. And it does a bunch of things, so the, the basic thing is say it just adjusts with a constant, which is, and it's, the operation type is kept to add, so we're adding, you know, some amount to this. Now if I change that, if I change this to set always, that means your constant value is zero, so all the points is dropped down to zero. If I change the adjust width to random, then it just is going to randomize. Okay, you can randomize in positive, you can do zero centered, which is better. You can also do like min max values, so that's also not a bad idea. Or you can apply specific values, I don't want to apply specific values. So we'll keep it zero centered. And then what you can do is, uh, if you come here to enable post process, you have an option for blending. Okay, so I can actually like blend between the base shape and the noisy shape. Okay, so you can do this, but you can also blend via an attribute. So just to set up the blend via attribute, what I'll do is let's take a sphere and I'll make it sort of, you know, tallish like that. I'll keep it to polygon. And just to make it a little more interesting, I want to add a mountain sop to this. And what we want is this should be big enough to cover that. And it's going to transform from like, you know, the outside over here. I'm putting the mountain sop after the transform so that when it moves through, it gives you like the wiggly motion. Okay. So I'm going to keep it here and we'll do alt click. Let's come to 90 and I'll bring it in like that. Okay. And what you do is you take something called as mask from geometry. Okay. So take mask from geometry and we'll mask using this guy. 
and if you want to visualize it like it will visualize anyways like once we move through you should start okay if it doesn't click on the mask here yeah, there you go okay so what you'll get is see this is you know it covers it let's move it a little bit further back because it might affect it and so you should okay if you're not seeing it like if you want to keep seeing it just you know click on the eye over here and then click on the name so that will show you the you know the mask that is forming so there you go and then what you can do is you can just come in here and you can say blend by attribute and type in mask and there you go so what will happen is you'll see this you know this thing sort of coming in and distorting it uh, let's just change this to a darker background yeah I think that's better okay so what you'll get is this okay so what and then you can also change this like we can change this to let's say uh, noise so you can also use noise which is not bad you can do min max again so yeah so now you have like a noise okay so this is this is fine right like this is this isn't a problem but the thing that's happening is it is only blending between like this ready-made stuff here okay so you can either either make it random or noise but what if you want to use this to blend between two shapes so what you can do is firstly we'll set up a blend okay so let's just take all of this and push it down and what we'll do here is I want this these set of points to blend into these set of points okay so what you can do is take something called as an attribute copy I'd never used this node before so this is the first time I was actually using it and what you want to copy is the position okay so just come in here and attribute name is position and there you go so it's taken all of these points and moved it to those points but uh, we also want to store the older position okay so like the position that we have here is what we want to store so take an attribute create and we'll create a vector attribute so just come in here and make it a vector and we'll call it old p okay and it should store the you know the original value so what we want is we want to do like at p dot x and at p dot y so this is the only bit of you know code that we'll have to type okay so you can do this or i can just take a wrangle node which is you know you can't get away from it but the idea was to use as little as possible and then we can do like at v at old p is equal to at p so this is the same thing okay so we've so what we've done is we've taken the base position and stored it into a vector attribute called old p okay so we can use this so either way is fine you can create an ad you can use an attribute create or you can do this okay so once you've done that now comes the interesting bit okay so let's just take this and we'll drop it in here so all the masking and everything is in place so we don't have to worry about that and we come into the attribute at just vector and we don't want to add noise or anything okay what we want to do instead is actually just turn off adjust value come into enable pre-process and it has this option called override initial values and override it with a vector attribute okay and the vector vector attribute we want is old p so what should happen is if everything works is this So it blends from you know the basic position back to the old position. If you reverse these nodes here, you'll get a you'll get the reversed result. Or you can also try to sort of you know remap the mask. Like if I come in here to my mask geometry and maybe if we do this, there you go. You know, so if we reversed it, say so you'll get that. Okay, and then if we take this test geometry and let's say if I just you know move it a little further out in the Z direction let's say if I keep it maybe like there okay so what you'll get is see is this if you are already seeing a stretch happening which means that the sphere needs to be moved out further which is why the effect is already starting to happen so just move it you know out enough so that it doesn't yeah. 
Okay, so this is, you know, this is it pretty much. Okay, but what we also want to do is we want to add some noise in the middle. Like as it transforms, I want it to be like, you know, very, very noisy. Okay, so in order to get like the noise transition in the middle, what we're going to do is we're going to generate a second mask. Okay, so I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take this sphere that we have like after the mountain and let's try a group. And what we'll do is we're going to group it in the Z normal. Okay, so take the normals and just lower it. Let's make it, let's make it minus one. So it's selecting this side. Just lower it enough to you till you only have like this. And take a blast and we'll delete this. So we'll delete group one, non-selected. Okay, so what you should get is just this thing moving. This might not be the best idea, okay. but let's see if it works. Uh, in my original one, I had just taken a box. I hadn't taken a sphere. Okay, so now take another mask from geometry and we'll keep it here and we'll just change the name to mask B and we'll plug this in. So what you should get is just like a wave going through. Okay, like you should get this, see. And I'll just sort of lower the radius so it's just like a short wave that, see, so this is what we're getting. And what I can do with this is we'll take another, let's call this as blend, blend positions. And we'll take another adjust vector. And I'll call this as noise wave. And here, what I'll do is I'll just say, add noise to position like you make sure that you change the attribute name to position otherwise you'll kind of wonder why nothing is happening because the default is kept to velocity and let's make it zero centered yeah okay and we'll keep this to Berlin we'll lower the amplitudes or actually fine this is this is okay and then I can just come in here to enable post process we'll blend using attribute mask B so what you should get is this. Yeah. But what we'll also do is I'm going to take a time shift and just I'll delay the main animation coming in. Okay, so this one I'll just do like minus 10. So this will so the wave comes in first. Okay, and then 10 frames later, the you know, the sphere comes in. So if we check this, what you should get is See this, you, ha you have like this noise happening. Let's just increase this a lot. Yeah, okay. So what you should get is see this noise comes in and then it starts to sort of, you know, fade in. So if I just try to visualize mask B, see. And you can delay it further still. Like if I, if I take this and make it like say 15. Yeah, see, so what you're getting is First you're getting the noise and then you're getting this. And if you want, we can also take this noise wave and we can animate it. So we can just turn on animation and like lower the pulse duration. So what you'll get is, see, oh, that's not too bad. We can lower the element size. Okay, I have no idea why I'm seeing two of them. Yeah, okay, that's why we're seeing two of them. Yeah, there we go. So if I press play, this should be like smooth enough. Okay, now as a final thing, uh, we want to create these lines in the middle. So what we're going to do is uh, this stuff, I'm going to take a trail sop. And what I also want is I want to store the point numbers into a custom attribute. So again, we're going to take our angle node. So this tutorial is essentially just a complete disaster because I keep using the angle node, but uh, there you go. And what I'll do is I'll just call it uh, store PT down. And what we'll have is we'll take, we'll create an integer attribute called at ID is equal to at PT num. So we're just storing the point numbers into a custom ID and there's a reason for it. Okay. You'll understand in a minute. So we're going to take a trail sop and we'll generate like, you know, a few trails like that. 
and then I'm going to take an add sop and we're going to connect these. So the reason why we need the ID is so that we can use that attribute to connect each point. So each point that has the same ID are going to connect together. So we'll get like, otherwise you'll get this, which is not bad, but it looks, you know, it just looks weird. So we're going to take by group, we'll set attribute and we'll call it ID. And what you'll get is this. See. And because it's sort of velocity based, once it the velocity is gone, it just disappears. Okay, now what I can also do on top of this is I can take a resample and we will resample it as subdivision curves and make it let's say 0 0.05. So it'll, you'll get like these really smooth lines. And that's pretty much it. And we can also just do like a curve view because what I can do with that is I can do a color. So maybe I can turn off the mask B and I can take a color and we'll make it RAM from attributes, curve view. See, there you go. And let's make it like black on both sides. And we can probably make it red. Or I don't know, something. And we can merge it with the original set of points that we have. So come in here and that. And there you go. You get this. See. The coloring you can decide, like that's completely up to you, you know, how you want to color this. It does slow down. What I realized, like if you have too many points, it, it'll slow down a bit. Like if I take the scatter to say 10,000, it, it starts to slow down. But it looks nice. I mean, that's the good thing about it. Okay, that's pretty much it. So, so this is how you can create you know, like blending between two set of points uh, by using as little vex as possible, <laughs> which as I said, wasn't completely successful. But uh, yeah, use the attribute adjust sort of vector and float nodes. They give you a lot of, uh, you know, interesting capabilities. Okay, that's pretty much it.